Now you're going to visualize interpretation of the red blood cell family. Interpretation of red blood cell family. Is it clear? Interpretation of red blood cell family. Now, with the interpretation of the red blood cell family, what you need to say there, you have the hemoglobin. Is it clear? You say which, if it is severe, if it is mild, if it is moderate. Is it clear? You have mild, moderate, and severe in the interpretation. Now, generally, the hemoglobin, my moderate and severe, is important. But what you have to know is that the etiology of the anemia is going to be visualized by if it is macrocytic, macrocytic hyper, hyperchromic, if it is macrocytic hyperchromic, or it can be um, microcytic um, my, um, hypochromic hypochromic or it can be normocytic normochromic is it clear? there are different etiologies when you are going to have these different types of anemia is it clear? now let's start with um, 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 microcytic hypochromic is it clear? microcytic hypochromic anemias microcytic hypochromic anemias is it clear? Now, for microcytic hypochromic anemias, generally you have to know that this type of anemias are associated with either iron deficiency, they are usually associated with either iron deficiency or iron storage. Is it clear? So, those are the two major pathologies associated with, um, with microcytic hypochromic anemia. Is it clear? It can either be iron deficiency anemia or it is iron storage. Um, this, uh, it's, a, it's a fake iron deficiency anemia due to iron storage. Is it clear? Now, in the case of iron deficiency anemia, we have the case of one. In case where you have reduced intake of iron, is it clear? You have reduced intake of iron. We have increased loss of iron, particularly in the case of chronic hemorrhage. I did not say acute hemorrhage, but I said chronic hemorrhage. You have lost iron for a very long period of time. Is it clear? We are going to have iron deficiency anemia. You lose iron for a long period of time. You are going to have iron deficiency anemia in chronic hemorrhage. Is it clear? So those are the different increased loss with chronic hemorrhage. Now, when there is a disorder of iron storage, oh, so, so when there is a disorder of iron storage, if there is any iron storage disorder, it can be associated with iron, iron storage disorder where the body cannot store iron. Is it clear? It can also be associated with a microcytic hypochromic anemia that is an iron storage anemia. Now, the second one that is also very important, chronic infections. Is it clear? Chronic infection also or is associated with iron storage, this iron, iron deficiency anemia associated with iron storage problem. In this case, with chronic infection, you need to know that what? The bacteria, the body recognize that you need to know that bacteria has a certain enzyme called CDO force. Is it clear? Bacteria has an enzyme called CDO force. And with this CDO force, the bacteria uses the iron in blood. The bacteria use iron in blood in order to metabolize and proliferate. Are you guys understanding? So when you have infection, the bacteria use the CDO force to metabolize the iron in blood to proliferate. So the body strives to inhibit the proliferation of the eye of the of the bacteria. The body tries to inhibit the proliferation of the bacteria. So to do this, the body is going to store iron. Is it clear? It's going to store iron. Is it clear? <clears throat> now, when the body store iron, we need to know that the storage of iron is inside ferritin, and ferritin is inside the reticuloendothelial endothelial system. Is it clear? So the storage of iron is inside ferritin, and ferritin is inside the reticuloendothelial system. Are you understanding? Now, since iron is going to be more stored inside ferritin, there is going to be less iron that is going to be in transferrin, which is located in blood. 
Are you understanding? So it means that there is going to be less serum ion. There will be less serum ion and less serum um, tra um, transferrin ion. And the, when the serum ion are bound, uh, is bound to transferrin, it's called the total ion binding capacity. Is it clear? It's called total ion binding capacity. It means that the total ion binding capacity is going to be low while the ferritin is going to be high. Are you understanding? Now, since the total ion binding capacity, that's the ion in blood, is low, the bacteria are not going to use again that ion for proliferation. That is why the bacteria are going to regress. But now, a side effect of this is that the bone marrow will not have enough blood, a, enough ion again for the production of the red blood cell. That is why the bone marrow is going to produce red blood cells that are deficient in iron they produce red blood cells that are deficient in iron and about this red blood cells that are deficient in iron is because of the storage of the iron by the other reticular and arterial cells in the kupfer cells is it clear in the kupfer cells so the body is going to produce red blood cell deficient in iron but the body has iron in order to prevent that the bacteria that are in the body to use iron is it clear so the management of this um iron um storage disease is not by giving iron but instead by managing the infection because if you give more iron much of this iron is going to be entering again the body and it's going to be stored in ferritin and later on result to hemochromatosis and hemosiderosis is it clear? It's going to result to these two different conditions. Is it clear? So those are the different things that you have to understand with um, iron. Now the next point of anemia that can be assured with iron deficient anemia, we have sideroblastic anemia. Is it clear? Sideroblastic anemia. So those are the different anemia which can be assured with and which can be having microcytic hypochromic with iron metabolism disorders. Is it clear? Now the next thing after that, you, after the the microcytic hypochromic anemia, you need to visualize now the um, macrocytic anemias. Is it clear? The macrocytic hypochromic anemias. Generally, macrocytic hypochromic anemia are divided into two. We have non megaloblastic anemia, non megaloblastic anemia, and we have megalo megaloblastic anemia. Is it clear? Now, megaloblastic anemia are generally as a result of one, it can be as a result of vitamin B9, which is also called folic acid. Or it is also as a result of vitamin B12 deficiency. Is it clear? Megaloblastic anemia is a result of either vitamin B9 or vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 is also called cobalamin. That's active form, but the inactive form is cyanocobalamin. Now you need to know that what the vitamin B9 or B12 deficiency can come as a result of multiple reasons. It can be a result of number one when there is a reduced absorption, there is a reduced intake of vitamin B9 and vitamin B12. Is it clear? There is a reduced intake of vitamin B9 and B12 going to result to that. The second point is that vitamin B9 do not have any special absorption system, so vitamin B9 is easily absorbed at the level of the intestinal gastrointestinal. Natural. But vitamin B12 has a special absorption system which is going to be via the intrinsic factor. Is it clear? So the stomach, we need to know that normally the stomach has to produce what is called the intrinsic factor. Is it clear? And that intrinsic factor is going to bind at the level of the terminal ileum. It's only absorbed at the terminal ileum. It will bind at the level of the terminal ileum for the absorption of the vitamin B12. So it means that malabsorption pathologies associated with if there is any gastric 